Welcome to the Lord's service to us by way of his name, word, and with his very body and blood. I have several announcements this morning, but first of all, I want to introduce uh, Nicole Muth, our stewardship coordinator, who's going to talk with you a little bit about our capital campaign, as well as the commitment forms you should have received in the mail. Nicole. Good morning. Hopefully you received the letter introducing our stewardship theme and the annual, annual commitment form in the mail. Our theme for Lent this year is spiritual visual, vision problems. And throughout Lent, we will be learning how to fix our spiritual vision problems by fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. To align with our theme for Lent, our stewardship theme for the 2022-23 fiscal year is enhancing your vision for giving. To enhance our vision for giving, I thought it would be helpful to start with the term stewardship. The term steward refers to a caretaker or manager, but not an owner. Likewise, the term stewardship recognizes that all we have, all we are, and all we do are gifts from God. So out of thanksgiving, we return a part of what is his to glorify God and extend his kingdom. You may also find it helpful to consider the five areas of blessings that we receive from God. First, God has given us all of creation, and that includes our bodies and our families. In addition, he gives us time and opportunities. He also has blessed each person with many talents and abilities. Next, God provides us with material possessions to care for ourselves, our families, and the needs of others. And finally, and most importantly, he gives us many spiritual gifts, such as faith, his word, the sacraments, forgiveness of sins, and the promise of eternal life. When we take an inventory of these five areas of blessings that we receive, we understand how truly blessed we are. And we seek to give, invest, and share his blessings so that others may be blessed and his kingdom can be advanced. So I ask you to prayerfully and thoughtfully consider how you might offer your time, talent, and treasure to support the ministry and mission of Trinity Lutheran Church. So you should have received a copy of the commitment form and on the commitment form you'll see a QR code so if it's easier for you to fill this out electronically you can scan it with your phone or the link is provided here or you can fill it out in a, the hard copy form and put it in one of the boxes that are um, in the exits of church um, to help trinity faithfully steward god's gifts and plan appropriately for the 2022 23 fiscal year please complete these forms by sunday april 24th which is the week after easter um, this helps us to plan appropriately for the coming year. Um, on the back, you also saw a little bit of information about the kickoff for the capital campaign. Trinity is starting a $500,000 capital campaign to enhance the church and school through our vision for a new playground. And you heard that vision for the new playground rolled out with our kickoff campaign with the calendar program, and you'll see some uh, calendars in the exit as well. Um, this is to help with some needed building upgrades also and to improve the function and the overall safety of the church and school. Um, a portion of this campaign will be going towards the uh, playground and you'll see more information about the campaign in the coming weeks. Please prayerfully consider how you might support this campaign as well. It has been and it continues to be a blessing to be part of Trinity Lutheran Church for the last 23 years and to serve alongside you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Nicole. A few other annou announcements that we have this morning is um, join us for refreshments following the service in the lounge and then head on into the gym for the Bible study, which will be led by Pastor Zick today. Um, I'll be teaching the Catechesis for Life new member class, and that's in the fellowship hall, and the Sunday school opening is at 9.30 in the music room. Please join us for midweek Lenten services each Wednesday, 10 a.m. and 6 or 6.30 p.m., 
There's a lunch, uh, luncheon after the 10 a.m. service in the lounge and a light supper before our evening service at 5.30 in the fellowship hall. Also, uh, if you haven't picked it up, Pastor, Pastor Zick will have these uh, yard signs for you in the back if you'd like to put uh, um, some information inviting people to come to our services here at Trinity. And Pastor Berg and Dr. Etherton will be returning this evening from the Lutheran High Choir uh, tour. I believe they get back around 7 or so. The service this morning is found on the panel of your bulletin. The best way to follow along is simply go to the page indicated on the panel. The green sheet is there with the readings, notes on today's service, and a devotion for you to be used throughout the week. So all the announcements I have, please stand. The bells will call us to worship. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Please kneel for confession and absolution. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you, and in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning. And though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> the Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday in Lent is from Isaiah chapter 12. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away, that you might comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth, Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country, and there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate. No one gave him anything. But when he came to himself... He said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring the fattened calf and kill it. And let let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. 
Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him, but he answered his father, look, these many years I have served you, and I never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this, this son of yours came, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Our text for this morning's sermon is taken from the gospel lesson with special emphasis on the following words. Bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this son, this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. This is our text. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ, when someone asks, what do you want from me? Often they are questioning your motives. They believe you bring a selfish reason for approaching them, and they are asking you what it is. When things go wrong, we might ask the same thing of God. What do you want from me? To our surprise, all God really wants us, wants for us, is to receive his love. That's it. That's what God wants. That's what he really wants. For you to believe, that is, to receive all the blessings that he created and redeemed you to have in and through his son, Jesus Christ. Now, the prodigal son in Jesus' parable didn't want his father's love. He didn't want it. Just his money. It was as if his father were dead. He doesn't want to have anything to do with him. He just wants the things that his father has accumulated. Now, in Jesus' par- parable, there's always something that, that really is outside the bounds of acceptable behavior. And in this parable, there is the son who asks for his inheritance before his father dies treating his father as if he were dead. Now, of course, that's unacceptable, but it's even bigger than that. What's truly beyond the pale is the father gives it to him. That would not happen. There's just no way that would happen, especially in the culture in which they lived. Now, the son was so blinded by the father's things that he overlooks the love and the life that he enjoys from his father. He he doesn't ascertain that his father is the source of all of this, of all of the blessings. And then this is what he thought from this old Adam perspective, if you will. He thought that he would find meaning and purpose, not by living with his father, not by living together with his family, He thought that he would find meaning and purpose far away from home by using people and things to get what he wanted. Ah, then I can have whatever I want. Away from the Father. Away from what he taught me. I could do whatever I want. And ultimately, if you think about it, that's an old Adam way of looking at it. We think we can do whatever we want by going far away from God and his church. Ah, then we can get what we want. We can just pick and choose and do whatever we want. So like the prodigal son, we don't listen to God. We don't listen to him because we don't believe in him. He has, because we want to do what we want to do, so we don't listen to God as he speaks to us in his word. We don't talk to him in our prayers. And like the older son in the parable, we refuse to go into this banquet hall right here to dine with God and our brothers and sisters in Christ because we think it's the happening stuff is out there, far, far away from here. Far, far away. It's as if we treat God as if he were dead. It's like, you know, when you don't come here, you're treating God as if you're dead, if he's dead. What do I need that for? You find more meaning and purpose in things, in the sports or in the money out there or in the trips or in whatever. You see, we treat God as if he were dead, as if he doesn't even notice. Now, if you're a spouse and you don't go home to your wife or your husband, do you think they'd notice? Of course they would. 
and they'd get the drift that you don't care about them if you have nothing to do with them. Well, how about with God? You see, the issue here is in Jesus' parable is getting at the heart. Often we treat God as if he were dead. In college, I was a philosophy major, and I remember I got, got to class early, and the professor had put on the board, God is dead. Nietzsche, by the way, that's a philosopher who said that. So nobody was there, and I crossed that out, left it up there, and I said, Nietzsche is dead, God, just to see what the discussion would lead to. And it did. We had a great discussion. But see, God's not dead. He's alive and well. It's you and me. We're dead. Dead in our trespasses and sins. And God wants you to see that. God wants you to see that you're, you're dead in your trespasses and sins. He wants you to, to recognize that because there's no hope for you in and of yourself. What God really wants you to see is that you're dead without him. You have no hope without him. You're in despair without him. I love, in the green sheet, I quote, again, a guy by the name of a pastor who's now in heaven, Robert Farr Capon. He writes this, all you can be is dead. By the way, because we're dead in our trespasses and sins, right? Are any of you getting out of here alive? No. All you can be is dead. All you can be in dead, and then he says, and for him who is the resurrection and life, well, that makes you his cup of tea because he's come to give you a new life, to make you into a new creation, as we hear in our epistle lesson. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. He knows how to live. He knows where life comes from, and he knows that it's best celebrated with everybody else because there's always more with the Lord. Now, notice what the prodigal learns from that faraway place away from God. It turns out that the people in that faraway place used him to get what they wanted, right? And when those things were gone, they treated the son like he had treated his father, as if he were dead. Huh. Yeah. They didn't care about him. By the way, in this culture, you know, when they say they cancel you, it's because they don't care for you. By the way, in the church, God will never, ever cancel you. I don't care what you've done or left undone. Do you get Jesus' meaning of this parable? I don't care what it is. He loves you. He, what he really wants is you to be under his care, to enjoy the life that he has created for you and now redeemed for you in and through Jesus Christ. Did you catch that in the parable, it was then that the son came to his senses. He came to himself, it says. Came to his, his senses when he's, he's in this severe famine and he's feeding the pigs, which, by the way, for him would have been, and in this parable, that would have been, oh, a really bad thing, right? Pigs, and, and he longs to eat what the pigs are eating. And there's this great famine, and he's going to starve. So he comes to his senses. He repents. He, he decides to do a 180. He recognizes that he's dead without his father. Did you get that? And this is what the father wanted all along, so that the son would return. And the son, he goes back to his father, thinking that while he was unworthy of sonship, his father would employ him. He thinks, I'm not worthy to be a son, so I'm going to ask him to take me on as a hired hand, you know? And I know he'll do that. My father's a good man, even though I've messed up everything. He'll still do that for me. And he goes with that in mind. But instead, his father graciously receives him back as his son. All his father ever wanted was for his son to receive his love, to believe in him. You see, God is not your employer. He's not. He's your father. Now, the father who was waiting for him all along to return, he does something that you would never, ever see in that, that culture either. 
he runs to his son. In that culture, you respect your elders, and you go to them. They don't go out of the way for you. But the father, he can't, he can't contain himself. He drops everything, and he, he runs. And he throws his best robe on him, puts the ring on his finger. By the way, that ring is the family ring. This is my son. And when the son says his little, you know, deal, right, where, where I've sinned against the, uh, God and against you, um, and he's about to say, you know, hire me on, the father cuts him off. I'm not going to hire you. You're my son. I'm going to bestow on you all the blessings that I have. And he says, kill the fattened calf, which he's been fattening up, hoping that his son would return. And let's celebrate, because this son of mine who was dead is alive again. He was lost, and he's found. Then we get to the older son, right? He doesn't get it. He doesn't understand. And refuses to go in to celebrate with his brother. And laments the things he doesn't get from his father. Now, think about that. He's really just like the, the prodigal was, right? In this situation. Like the prodigal, the older son has his eye on the things and treats his father as if he were his employer. And notice what he says. He calls his brother, that son of yours. Yeah, that's not my brother. And by the way, sometimes people do that around here. This, well, if so-and-so goes to this church, I'm not going. I'm not going in there because, you know, he did this, that, and the other. Well, I got news for you. You did, you did this, that, and the other as well. So have I. We've all offended each other. We've all sinned against each other. And God calls us here to make us alive again, we who are dead in our trespasses and sins, to forgive our sins. And the father who goes out to him he goes out to him and says these words, Son, son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. I'm your father. I'm not your employer. Ha! Huh. All that, and, it, and it's not just a goat or the blessings of this life that our father has for us, but it's the blessings of life forever and the glory of God. So the eldest son, besides this one, by the way, oh, one more thing. He said um, he wouldn't let him, uh, he wouldn't let the, this older son get away with not calling his, um, his brother his brother. He says, no, we had the son because this your brother. He's, he's your brother, right? But now I want to flip it a little bit here. And I, wanted, I want you to think of the eldest son who is telling the parable. Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made. What is he here to do? He's here to fulfill what the Father wants. And he ensures that we are indeed with the Father always, and that everything that is his is ours. That's when you were baptized, you became a child of God. And that's when everything that belongs to Jesus, everything that belongs to the Father, became yours. And you have access to this forever because you belong to him. And nothing and no one will separate you from his love. In closing, the Apostle Paul reminds us of what God really, really, really wants. God wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. So John writes, See what great love the Father has lavished on us or been prodigal toward us with. By the way, that's what prodigal means. Either extremely wasteful like the Son or lavish, extremely generous like the Father. See, see what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. In the end... You know what God really wants? God really wants you. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and our lives in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
we continue with the prayer of the church. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love. Give us a proper knowledge of the evil we have done in your sight. Move us to confess our offenses against you and justify us by your holy absolution. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father in heaven, you welcome us into your family for the sake of your Son. Call us all to repentance when we wander from your ways or believe we have earned a place in your household by our works. And return us to the confident joy that in Christ alone we are found, found and made alive. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, that you have made your deeds known among us. Bless pastors, teachers, musicians, and all church workers in their daily labors to make known your deeds among the peoples. We give thanks especially this day for the work of Jenna Rayski, our, the principal of Trinity Lutheran School, and her faithful and caring work among us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, we are brought forth in iniquity and conceived in sin. Make us ever grateful in holy baptism that there you forgive and enliven even the smallest child, and that for Jesus' sake you wash us thoroughly from our iniquity and cleanse us from all sin. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, in Christ you were reconciling the world to yourself. Watch over our nation and all whom you have placed in authority. Give them wisdom and prudence that your people might live in peace and freely make known the message of reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers for all who cry out to you for mercy, healing, and help, including Paul, Paulette, Andrew, and Emma Krieger, who are recovering from injuries from a car accident, and especially Paulette, who remains hospitalized. We pray for the victims of war in Ukraine, including the family members of Anna Pomerenko, Bernadine, Mark, and Cora Lee recovering from surgery, Wally recovering at home after a total hip replacement, Tom recovering after, at home after being hospitalized, all who are afflicted with COVID-19, Steve in palliative care at home, Deborah for continued management of her illness, Benjamin, Bruce, Bernadette, Sue, Jennifer, Sharon, Judy, William, Doris, Lloyd, Timothy, and Laura, all in treatment for cancer, Dorothy and Elaine in hospice care, and the families of Frida Larson and Kevin Eisner, and also the, of the family of the one who died in that accident. And we also pray for the families of Roy Hook and Kathy Balnitis, who we remember today. Deliver them all according to your will. Bring your comfort to them. And as you have made them a new creation in Christ, keep them mindful of the day when sorrow, sickness, and death will be no more. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Great in our midst is the Holy One of Israel who visits us this day with his very body and blood. Give to all who partake of this Holy Communion penitent hearts that properly receive Christ Jesus as their strength and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord of glory, fill the hearts of your people in all their various callings with the joy of your salvation that they may make it known in all the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the offering and for the signing of the Friendship Register.
The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.